So we're looking at a question here, and it's about how to be productive, how to overcome procrastination, how to encourage your nervous system to comply with the higher mind's goals, its higher goals. Nervous system is not interested in those, it's interested in safety only. So this is part of the ongoing conversation here on this channel. But this is a question, it's a really good one, and it's from Shona, I wanna answer her question. And it says, so a previous video I talked about how only making small commitments on a daily basis is so helpful for overcoming procrastination and getting your nervous system to comply. And this video is in relation to, well, I have something called minimums for myself. So it's a standard that I attune to within myself for any particular goal I might have that I know is so easy for me to do consistently yet it shows um, it feels solid enough that I'm making progress in okay so that's what this video uh, shown as question came from that video that topic of setting minimums minimum standards for engagement so Shona writes, this is such an important point for me to work on because I have a lot of anxiety about feeling like I don't have enough time. That's the first part. And that is so common. It's, the, it's, it's very interesting with procrastination because there's actually two ways we perceive time. One voice says, I don't have enough time. I'm running out of time. And yet the other voice, we'll hear it say things like, I have plenty of time. I have loads of time. I have all the time in the world. Neither of them are actually helpful voices. Okay, so that's very common, obviously, that we feel like we're running out of time. So it continues. It says, I'd like to ask you what you think about setting minimums, like 30 minutes on one important task, 30 minutes on another tha task, where I feel I'm progressing, but then doing more. Okay, so do you, should you do more once your minimums are met. I tried this today, I set a minimum time, I did the minimum, I tried to feel satisfied that I was finished, but I had an overwhelming desire to keep going, so I did. And I'm afraid that I don't feel that pleasant sense of satisfaction. Do you have any thoughts on this? I'm thinking I'm being over demanding uh, or overly perfectionist and fundamentally trying to do too much. Well, absolutely too much is the problem with this issue. It's that, it's that sense inside that I'm, I'm never finished, I'm never finished. But if I suggest that you should, should commit to minimums, does that mean that you're not allowed to do any other work that you, or that you shouldn't do any work in addition to this? Not quite. So, what I'm suggesting is that you only, when you wake up in the morning, the whole thing is how do I engage with the work or how do I engage with my goals? Now, if I tell myself I have five hours of work to do on that project, my nervous system won't sign off on it. It's not going to engage. So this is where the idea of minimums comes in and why it's so important. I only commit to one small thing in this goal, right? Now, once you have that met, the important thing is, yes, you can do additional work, but I want you to pause after you've met the minimum, okay? The, 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 the really important thing is that you pause, you stop for a moment after it. Why? In that pause after you've completed the minimum, the solid amount of work that's easily uh, sustainable, the pause is important because what I want you to start doing is practicing sending a signal to yourself proactively that I'm finished. That signal needs to be sent proactively. What do I mean by that? Well, isn't it true that if we're about to go and take action on a goal, we have to give ourselves a proactive message to go and do it? We give ourselves the on signal all the time. Okay, now it's time I'm taking action, right? Do we give as much thought to sending proactively the off signal to ourselves. We forget that, and that's the whole problem with this. It's the nervous system isn't hearing messages of completion. So once you meet your minimum standards, like, okay, I'm finished, I'm finished. And what you want to start to feel into then is, 
maybe that's in the earlier part of your day, you've met your minimums. Now you send yourself the off signal. And now what you're moving into is, are you allowed to or should you engage with additional work? Yes. However, it shouldn't be from a sense of obligation. What you want to do with it is feel into it. Now, for one thing, it's a little complicated because there's a few reasons why you yet yeah, a desire to do more will be there but there are there are problems if you just completely just go I'm doing more 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 for one thing your nervous system doesn't want you to do it because it's not about safety and the other reason is you may have competing needs in addition to let's say you're working on a business right you might have fitness needs you might have spiritual needs that need your attention you might have relation relationship needs all sorts of other needs even other goals that are requiring your attention so we have to be careful to find a balance with that. So what I'm suggesting is after you, you've met your minimum and your goals, right? what you do is you step into, I am open to do more here, but I need to be more intuitive. I can't be too um, structured. The, the minimums, setting minimums around certain goals you may have is a very, what I call a masculine frame. It's a structured approach. It's like I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this. Right now, you only take it one thing at a time, but let's say you have three goals you're working on, you work through those goals, you're completed, there your standards met. The masculine energy is all about standards. Okay, it's all about achievement, doing. And that's, we need some of that. But then if our whole day is like this, we become unbalanced. So what we need is the masculine and, and feminine energy within us. So the after you've met your minimums, what you want to start doing is feeling more spontaneous, more free with things okay, you can still engage but I would suggest what you do like one thing you could say to yourself is anything I do now in addition to the goal I've already done is a bonus I would call it a bonus sometimes I call it the, the spontane, spontane, spontaneous part of the day I also call it um, bonus territory it's when you're adding to things but you're not rigid about it right you're you're open you're spontaneous you're feeling into what wants to happen because again the there will be many competing goals probably or needs um, vying for your time and attention now one little caveat on this if you have something you're working on a goal and you're meeting minimums on it and let's say it's the only goal you have it's a really important one I would also suggest it might be no bad idea to have a maximum amount of time you're allowed to engage with it, okay? Because that, that um, as I've said in previous videos, procrastination and workaholism are identical problems. They just manifest differently. So the problem being here potentially is, let's say you say, okay, I met my minimum, I feel spontaneously like doing more and so you dive in and you start doing more and you get into what's known as maybe a flow state which is what everybody wants to be in and you're in that flow state and a lot of time is going by and you're engaged with it that sounds brilliant right it's actually not that good because the nervous system won't actually fully endorse that because it doesn't know when it's going to end so what I'm basically saying here is with all the goals that you have conscious goals that you carry it can't be a case of the tail starts wagging the dog it can't be a case of the goal starts to do you rather than you're doing the goal so having a maximum amount of engagement for anything for one thing, it's healthier. It makes your nervous system more compliant. And it also makes it easier to engage with it, right? So you can add the idea of maximum times. How much time am I going to permit myself to do this? I'm, you know, that sounds like a higher order problem than the person who is struggling to engage at all. But trust me when I tell you, it's just as important to be quite decisive with yourself when it comes to stopping work at a predetermined time for yourself. It's really not a good thing for you to do if you have procrastination issues. 
if you're saying okay maximum today is, is uh, two hours we'll say and well it's two hour two hours yeah but i'm making progress i'm going to keep going and what you're doing is you're undermining your own authority to set boundaries with things which is the exact problem that starts procrastination it's moving a boundary and makes it difficult to get into the work so i know there's a lot in this and i'm probably i hope i'm not confusing you with my answer here shona but yes you can do additional work but try and make it a little bit more spontaneous right don't have it don't be too rigid around start times with it for instance you can still use start times but don't be rigid with it uh, like a commitment to firm start times but if it's something that you procrastinate with really watch out for how much time am i spending on this you don't want to be spending too much time on any one goal because it'll create an imbalance between the needs that you carry within yourself Unless you decide to do it consciously and deliberately, you can have it like a deep dive day. And if you do it ahead of time intentionally, that's okay. But if you if you don't sanction it, you don't intend on doing a deep dive, and you you do the deep dive, it's not very helpful. It's not that good. So, but the main thing is this is kind of secondary to the, the other video I made. The main thing that's going to be helpful for most people watching this when it comes to procrastination is a commitment to minimums. Okay. What is the minimum standard for engagement that I feel I can do very easily and consistently and still feel like I've made some solid, decent progress? That's the fundamental approach. If you have that right, you see, the feeling you have of, yeah, I did this the minimum, but I still don't really feel like I've done that much, that could be a hangover also from previous procrastination. Because if you can consistently over weeks and months hit the minimum for your goal on a daily basis you're not going to have a feeling of i'm not doing enough it's going to become very clear to you after a few weeks and months that consistently engaging even with a minimum standard of engagement is actually incredibly effective okay like what could a person do in half an hour a day every day you could easily write a book in that time easily easily write a book in that you can get you could get in incredible shape if you wanted to right? you could improve your relationships you could um, you could read how many books could you read in a year if you did that okay doesn't sound like much but we underestimate the impact of small consistent daily actions that's the trick that's really the trick to it all so again the other thing I want to emphasize before I finish is once you've met the minimum standard for engagement, remember this. You must then send yourself the signal. Ah, finished. You may have a preference to do more. Sure, you're allowed to have that and you may have an openness to do more, but you're not going to be rigid about it. It's like I just met my minimum standards. I'm finished. You want to be telling yourself, if I do nothing else for the rest of the day, if nothing else happens, it's okay. If nothing else happens now, it's okay. I met my standard. And again, if you do that consistently over a long period of time, you're not going to have problems with this. So, I don't know if this video will invite more questions or not, but um, that's the approach that I find is very useful and it's helpful for my clients also. We, It's okay to be to have standards. It's okay to have structure. But we don't want to have too much structure. Our whole day shouldn't be rigidly structured. We want some structure. If your whole day is structured, really rigidly controlled, there's a thing called decision fatigue. So you want to be doing it maybe earlier in your day, if, if at all possible. That may not be possible for everybody. It doesn't matter. But you don't want to have your your decision making, you know, for the, the, the goals you're working on, stretched out over your entire day. You want to have it within a shorter window and you want to be impactful in that window and then give yourself the signal proactively finished i'm done i'm completed okay i think i'll leave it there but uh shona thank you for your question and um, if anyone else has more questions you can leave them below or just feedback on in general what you think of this thanks for being with me guys i really appreciate you 
appreciate everybody watching these videos and uh, if you like it and if you can share it with somebody you think it would help it's uh, really appreciated so take care and i'll talk with you again soon bye for now